All right. So, uh, as I said in the previous video, um, what we will do in this video is to find a way to predict uh, or to just find out uh, how many roots uh, there will be for these quadratic equations. Okay. So, uh, now if you are a very careful observer, uh, you will find out that uh, the equations are listed right here. Okay. They are slightly different. Okay. They're slightly different than the ones uh, from the previous examples. Now, for the examples, they were all equal to zero. Okay. But here, it's not equal to zero, it's just y, all right? Now, the reason, the difference, okay, is that if it's just equal to zero, we are talking about when y is equal to zero, okay? So, so if you refer to the uh, first example, we found out the two roots, which were uh, negative two and seven, and then the graph will show you that, hey, yeah, it's uh, negative two and seven, as the x-intercepts, okay, negative two comma zero, seven comma zero, okay? And then uh, you look at the second example, we also have two roots and the graph would show you that there are two uh, x-intercepts. We say there are two roots, one at negative three halves, and then the other one is negative one half. Now, the third example that we did on the previous page, uh, we had only one root, and it is at three. So that is what this graph is showing us. Uh, it's only touching the x-axis once, okay? And then the fourth example, uh, we had two imaginary roots. And when we have two imaginary roots, that means the, quad, the, the, the graph, the quadratic equation, uh, it doesn't even touch the x-axis, okay? So, so now we uh, did a lot of work, right? We did a lot of work, okay, to get to the roots. So now we are a little bit curious, and that is, is there a way that we can find out how many roots there would be for these equations without doing the whole thing? And we say, yeah, that's a way. All right, so we say, let's go ahead and find out the discriminant. And what the heck is discriminant? It's called B squared minus 4AC. Well, where do we see this b squared minus 4ac? Do you know where you saw b squared minus 4ac? Okay, think about it. Where did you see b squared minus 4ac? All right, let me give you a hint. We wrote it a little bit earlier before. <laughs> so b squared minus 4ac, it's right here. Now, and we call this a discriminant because it helps us... Uh, see something, okay, to see what, to see the number of roots, okay, now I'm going to go ahead and highlight the discriminant value for those examples, okay, for example number one, this is our discriminant, it's 81, the second example, it's 16, okay, for the third example, it is zero, okay, right here is zero, and then the fourth example, the discriminant value, it's negative 116. So, uh, and because of these values, we were able to conclude how many roots there will be. Uh, when it is greater than zero, we will say there are two real roots. And you know what I'm gonna ask? That's a question, okay? The question is, why? Why there are two real roots when, why are there two real roots when b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero? Well, if you actually consider the quadratic formula, which I'm going to write it here because I don't want to flip back and forth with these slides, okay? So if you actually look at the discriminant here, if this number is greater than zero, that means you would have to add or subtract a number. Okay, you have to add or subtract a number. That means you have two separate answers. You have two possibilities. And therefore, you have two real roots. Now, when you have a zero as your uh, discriminant, well, if b squared minus 4ac is a zero, then you have to add or subtract zero, which 
means you don't really have anything to add or subtract. So what is left? The only thing that's left is negative b over 2a. So therefore, we know that the root that you will be getting is just negative b over 2a. Okay, You don't have to really memorize it if you have the quadratic formula understood and you understand the why. All right. And then, and then what about the... What about the discriminant being less than zero, meaning it's negative? Well, if this number is negative, you have a square root of a negative number, just like example four. You're going to have an i term, going to have a complex number, okay? So, uh, so that's going to give you uh, imaginary roots. And whenever you have imaginary roots, there would always be two because you have a plus bi and a minus bi. So we will say... Now, there will be no real roots because it doesn't really touch the x-axis, uh, but there will be two imaginary roots, which we will go ahead and find out using quadratic formula. Okay, so, so that's what discriminant tells us. Uh, if you are good, you can use uh, mental math to find out the discriminant. Uh, it's a really, is a really good tool to predict how many, uh, how many, uh, intercepts or how many roots you will get. Uh, sometimes uh, it will be asked on the SAT, okay? So uh, you want to make sure that you are understanding this uh, little simple idea. All right, so now uh, we'll go ahead and try some examples here, uh, but uh, I'm gonna cut this video here and then the next video we'll go through these examples. It's really simple examples, okay? So uh, we'll continue in the next video.